Most ever, everybody. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and this is going to be your love and marriage. Oh, no. Bell Collective. I'm going to do Bell Collective first. Then we're going to come back and do Love and Marriage Huntsville. So, you know, I watch and review these um, episodes at the same time. So, y'all going to watch it with me as I watch. I've already watched it once, but... Now you can watch, um, we're going to watch it together. Bell Collective was actually good, this episode. This is episode six called Sage and Champagne. Now, I felt a little funny about the sage burning because we know that it's really over-harvested and a lot of these little fake-ass witch kits and shit be having um, white sage in there. And you really, if you're not indigenous, you really should not be burning white sage. Um, I believe that's why Antoinette made it a point to say that she was native. Girl, I'd like to see the Carfax because, bitch, if you a native, um, a native American, black American, your ass should not be hanging around with Jefferson Davis's daughter, the granddaughter, whatever. Anyways, let me just start this goddamn video. Letitia and Latrice are meeting so she can bring her up to speed on what's going on with Fair Street since she was not at the brunch. She wants to make sure that she is... Um, you know, involved in some way because she is an entrepreneur. So she wants to bring her up to speed. If Letitia says she a housewife to boss wife one more time, we get it. You better put it on a shirt. They said, shout out to McDonald's for the free Wi-Fi. <laughs> you loud, Letitia, I'm in my ear, law. Ooh. Shout you loud. Ooh. I need to get myself together. I look disheveled and distressed. So Latrice is sharing with us that when she was starting her business, it was mostly trial and error, and she would like to be involved in some capacity so that she can help other entrepreneurs, you know, have the resources they need that she didn't have. So. She said Maria's mean. Oh, that was kind of, that was a little, that was a little awkward. Okay, so, <laughs> so she's trying to explain how nice Marie is. And then the no, Latrice says, I'm a nice person. And she goes, no, no you're not. I'm not a mean girl. And she, what? How come she said, no, you're not? Like, has Latrice been talking behind Letitia's back? Because the way she said that made it seem like she was talking behind her back. She said, when we are across from each other, you're not a mean girl. So, hmm. What was that supposed to mean? Did I miss something? So Tambra is at a fertility clinic, looks like. I guess she's going to check on her eggs. Oh, talking about her fibrates. Can I just say, quietly, I really like that there are so many women who are like, I'm 40, so I'm thinking about having a family now. Like, it's not like, I'm 25, I need to have a hurry up and have a family. It's like, okay, I'm 40, I got my career and everything settled and everything. I'm ready to have a family. I love that. I Love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Tambra. Ooh, that voice. Ooh. I'm sorry, but I love when doctors really get down and they explain what is happening and and you can tell that they love what they do in the way that they give you so much detail and explaining so that you can feel comfortable because with so many different words and terminology and things that are used, it can scare a person or make a person feel a little anxiety. But I love when there's so much passion behind someone who practices medicine. Shout out to the, all y'all doctors out there. <laughs> Baby Tamra had her heels on, about to get in the stirrups. Girl, it's not that type of party. <laughs> If you had heels on here, <laughs> I know that's right. That was funny. I love this. I, I'm so interested in what he's saying. I love it. Thank y'all for including this in this episode. I am so enthralled with what this man is talking about. I'm looking like so interested. So what is he suggesting? So he basically explained to her that because of the fibroids, some fibroids came, fibroids came back and because of how large they are, that she could have a miscarriage. 
And so he's saying, you don't, you don't want that to happen because you have saved these eggs. You don't want to miscarry the things that you, the eggs that you saved. So I don't know, maybe she needs a surrogate. What well, I don't know why she, I mean, and then it depends. I don't even know like how, how fast they grow, but like when she's actually ready to have it, if he, she comes back and she has more fibroids, then maybe the next step is surrogacy. That's the only thing that I could think of. Um, you know, somebody can carry the baby for her. She could still have her little, her little baby. But I know that, I know that some women want to experience pregnancy. I know that I, I, when I tell you I loved being pregnant, I loved being pregnant, baby. I loved it. I really loved the magic of it all. Like there is a human growing inside of you. I get emotional because it's an amazing, an amazing, an amazing thing that we are able to do. It's beautiful. So I could see, I could see why she would want to maybe have that experience. I'm sure that some women would want to have that experience. So I get it. Diva got emotional, child. It is an amazing thing. Like, and I don't, and you know what? And it's so amazing that I don't understand how we as women are treated so badly when we bring fucking life into this world. Just, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I do not get it. How could you treat the bringer of life, the populator of civilization, how could you treat that person so horribly? I just, you would think that you would exalt her and lift her up and protect her at all costs. Like, I just don't get it. Baby, I wish that damn golf cart would have tipped over on his ass. But I understood why he was mad. This is beautiful. Let me tell you something about, about what production is doing. I mean, these are really good, really good stories. Honey, my nose is red and everything. I told you when the diva gets emotional, her nose gets red. Okay. Now we're going to sit here with Antoinette and her group of black dental professionals and I don't, I just don't understand why Kaylon needed to be there. I feel like when we talk about having conversations, like we can talk commentary on here like this, right? We're talking about it. We have our opinions. But when we're talking about now executing these things that we're talking about, I don't think that white people should be in the room. I'm sorry. I just don't think so. I I don't know what you want to call me for thinking that, but I just don't think they should be in the room. I don't think they should be in the spaces like that. I just, I just don't. So Antoinette wants to basically pay for the dental, the entrance exam to the dental school that you need to pay for. She wants to be able to pay for the, I don't know, the entire class or something like that. I believe that she says, um, and so other people said that they are mentoring. So they have this thing going on where they want to get more black dentist into the field because there's not there's, there's just not a lot so um i think it's this is a really great idea i just don't understand why kaylon needed to be there i think those people would have been offended if they knew who she was and who her great great grandfather was i just i don't know why she needs to be there i don't know why she needs to be there I think what she's doing is great. I think what Antoinette is doing is awesome. And my thing is, she doesn't need to be there so she can see. There are other examples of good black people. We don't, Antoinette, I don't really. And it the whole thing, like I said on Twitter, it's not like this woman is some random racist bitch, some just Southern racist white bitch. This is a woman whose prominence came from the fact that her family enslaved black people. So she really does not need to be included in these conversations 
nor does Antoinette need to position herself to prove that there are good niggas. I don't agree with it at all. I just don't agree with it at all. I just, and she's embracing her and everybody's looking like, who the fuck is this white bitch? This is Jefferson Davis's great, great granddaughter. She's going to sit in on a meeting about rebuilding and motivating black dentists and black medical professionals. Yeah, she's in the meeting. For what? Oh, I wanted to show her that there's good niggers. No, we're not doing that. She needs to know what professionalism looks like. Oh, so you one of those good. Nah, see? Uh-uh. Antoinette, I'm cool. I am so cool. I'm so cool. I'm so cool. I'm so cool. And it sucks because what she's doing is chef's kiss. But bitch, your your need to be the good Negro, I'm not, I'm not here for it. I'm not. I'm not here. And then for you, I just and then for you to be like, I want you to see what real professionalism looks like. I don't understand what the fuck that means. I don't understand the only reason why that that brunch got the way that it got the way that it became unprofessional is because your home girl sat and told an, a black woman in a space with other black entrepreneurs that she was a nobody. The great great granddaughter of the president of the Confederate States told a black woman at a black brunch that she was a nobody. So I don't know what kind of professionalism you want. Kaylon to witness, I'm cool on fucking Antoinette. This sucks because she's doing really great things, but bitch, your character is shaky as fuck. I was in a situation where I felt my race was getting put down. She says she got a taste of it and it gives her so much more empathy. <sighs> I don't know who the man Antoinette was engaged to or married to. I just surely hope he's not a descendant. I'm, I mean, he is a descendant. I mean, he's white. He is a descendant of somebody that owns, that owned people. But a direct connection, I hope. I really hope not. I, that makes, that's, I really hope not. That's so gross. I love Latrice's house. I love it. So Latrice is their fifth wedding anniversary and she is in the house because she's like, he said, this was going to be my anniversary. So she walks in the house. There's no flowers, nothing cooking, nothing in the fridge. So she's trying to figure out what the hell is going on. She's talking to herself now. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Just breathe. Just breathe. <laughs> she's getting upset. Here, here, baby, I got you a gift. He got this old raggedy ass gift bag from the damn Dollar Tree and a rose. I know you love flowers. Um, Cliff is too big. He is too petty for me. He's petty. He's petty. Oh, poor baby. She was like, I'm so excited. <laughs> you said ladies love flowers, so I bought you some flowers. And he dead serious, too. He don't, have, he don't even have a smile on his face. That's how you know he ain't shit. Baby, she threw like that sack of flour at him. Baby, Latrice is not having it. He forgets anniversary. She's telling on him now. She's mad because you know when you get mad, you start saying stuff. Baby, she went to the liquor cabinet <laughs> and made her a drink. I know that's right. She, nigga, you have me stressed out. I know that's right. Like, like the queen that I am. But let me tell you how Latrice looks so fly sitting in that white chair with that black dress on having her drink. She looks perfect like a rich black woman. Hello. So he comes back downstairs and he's dressed and he has a silk scarf, red silk scarf. And he says, I'm, a, I'm about to surprise you. Very cute. I was like, okay, Cliff, you make, you making it up. You making it up. She can't, she can't do nothing, but you can't even be mad at that. You can't even act mad. <laughs> Bitch, you just say he look like Denzel mixed with a little who? Denzel mixed with a little old brownish. Wait. Denzel mixed with a little Willy. Mixed with a little Obamish. I, I like Bell Collective. I, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it. I like it. I like to. I'm, I'm enjoying getting to know new, new people. You know, 
I'm, I'm enjoying that. Hey, they're in their golf cart driving. Latrice says, we have so much land, baby. I don't know where we are. I said, I know that's right, bitch. <laughs> he looked nice for a, uh, for an old man. You know, oh, they really, you know, they, I don't know. I don't like his shoes. It don't go with his outfit. His pants look a little too long at the bottom, but I mean, he's okay. He's on his property, so he ain't really going anywhere. So they get down to their destination, and he takes off the blindfold. Oh, that's so nice. He has all the candles lit up. They got the table. He got love and lights. Very, very cute, Cliff. Very cute. Very good. Bay! Oh, my God! Bay! Right, honey. We got money. I could pay the people to do it, okay? I could pay the people. I don't have to do this myself. Very cute. Very cute. So cute. I can't stop smiling. It's so cute. He got a green box. Got her a green box. This better not be a joke. This better not be a joke because you play too much. We already know We already know you play. Look how you looking. Why she hug him and fall down like that? Latrice is a mess. Ha! He said he bought her a Rolex so she'd know what time to be home on time. Shut up. For the good times. Come on. For the good times. Cheers to the good times. She's explaining how the men in her life have left her in some type of way. Um, we know on a previous episode, she's aware of her daddy issues. Um, so she's kind of bringing up that she doesn't want him to leave her. She doesn't want another man to leave her. She does have abandonment issues. She said she never had a man in her life who's constantly there. So she said her husband is the one who has stuck by her and has never left her for any reason. So I guess she says, okay, with me having abandonment issues, it makes me feel a certain way when you say, what woman should I get? And he was like, what? He said, I never said I was going to get a woman. Now, he looking at her, he looking at her sideways like, girl, what's up? He looking at he got his head, <laughs> he got his head like this, like, girl, what's up? What you don't play with me? <laughs> Look. He said, if you're gone out of my life, I will be happy with another woman. Yes, that absolutely makes total sense. I think what Latrice was doing was trying to explain what well, she explains later, but I don't know why she brought that up. We, could, we just, let's just watch it. It's working, baby. I want it to work. It's working. Like, what are you talking about? Scared. Her insecurities are coming up. She just needs, she needs some, she needs therapy. That's it. She needs to just unpack the daddy shit, unpack it all, just unpack it. I mean, you know, you have daddy issues. You married an old ass daddy man. So come on. There's a lot of things that she has to, she just needs some therapy. So. I think that we just need to, like everybody, we all need therapy. Everybody, like to say, everybody needs therapy, period. If you have access to it, you're able to get it, do it, do it. Even if you don't, the minute you sit across from a person who does not know you and is just going to listen to you and look out and listen to the things and where you need to work on and don't, and don't know anything else, you got to be honest though. You got to be honest. Can't get up in front of a therapist and start not being completely honest with yourself, which is very hard. However, comma, that's what needs to happen. Otherwise, those insecurities are going to keep coming up because we did see how she responded when he said male look nice. And she was like, you don't need to tell. He's like, why does that make you uncomfortable? But she's not going to admit that it makes her uncomfortable, but it does make her uncomfortable. She has abandonment issues. And sometimes people with abandonment issues, they will push people out like push them out themselves instead of letting the person leave on their own. Like they'll create an environment to push the person away. And then that will like, they didn't abandon me. I, I kicked them out. Right. And what he did was leave. And what she said was, I feel abandoned. Well, you pushed him into that. I mean, and that's not, she, and it's, I guess you do it unconsciously until you know that those are, that's what you're doing in your therapy when it'll come out in therapy. Only people that can come between our marriage is me and you. Can't nobody else come between us. It's just me and you. And she's sitting there looking very emotional. But one thing I think that probably he, the wisdom that comes with an older man, um, I think is probably, of course, based on her history, is what is keeping them together. He doesn't seem to, I mean, he's controlling but she's also controlling. It just sucks to be where two people in a relationship 
have their insecurities, but that just happens. He said, every time I do something or try to do something for my wife, she says something that messes it up. And he was like, she was like, no, I don't do that. He was like, Psh. she was like, let's not do that. So there's some, they need therapy. That's just it. While you may be strong in business, and we see it a thousand times. We, you have a businesswoman. She's strong in the office, in her professional life. She's a fucking boss. But in her personal life, she has insecurities that create conflict in her relationships. Men and women, both. You don't want to shame somebody for having insecurities, but it's based on life experience. It's based on, you know, just truths that you've come to agree that may not really be true. Just agreements that you have made that are not beneficial to you or helpful to you. Yes, those create insecurities. You don't have to be an insecure person, but you can have insecurities. I mean, it's just what it is. So he's like, I'm not talking about no woman. She said, I don't, there's just some things that a wife doesn't want to hear her husband saying. He's like, I'm not talking about no woman. Because he don't know what she's talking about. I don't know what she's talking about either. We haven't seen anything. I don't know if she's talking about that thing with male. I can't imagine that. But he even said something before that it's kind of, you know, kind of bugging her. So she's bringing it up. And she, it's, she really shouldn't bring it up because this is supposed to be a nice time. I hate when people fuck up nice like environments it's supposed to what is this that i was about to say is this valentine's day but it's their anniversary you want to talk about the good parts we know you there's bad parts but talk about the good parts on the good day right to make the anniversary memorable he said i don't do lying ass shit it's an old man talking to you girl daddy he said he don't do that lying ass shit don't fucking play with him at this table with all these lights and candles and shit around with these cameras around y'all play too much you get in front of these damn cameras you act. <laughs> you can tell when he said, "You riding or you walking?" I'm finna go. You can see his whole energy in his face. Just everything changed. He got mad. You could see it. You could. You could see. I said, "Oh shit!" When I was watching it the first time, I was like, "Oh shit!" Cliff got mad. He really got upset. Don't play that shit with me. Some men, I I don't know. I've been seeing this theme, but some there are some right there. Are some not all. There are some that don't want a label of having a low character. Men who cheat on their wives or act like or do things to kind of disrespect their wives. That's a man of low character. And not every man wants to have that label on them. I, I just, you know, there, there are, it's, it's little, but some people get offended when you accuse them of doing something that is of low character. He looked like he really got mad. Scooted the chair out real back. I don't do bullshit. Ooh, don't be aggressive towards me, number one. Okay, I get that you're mad, but don't direct that aggression towards me. Scooting out chairs fast and shit. So your role, grandpa. Don't lie on me. She said, I just want to make sure that he knows I'm trying to communicate with him. And there are some things that he has said that make me uncomfortable. That's great and all well and good, but this is not the environment to bring it up. Wrong place, wrong time. Um, give me a few minutes because I have to lock the door and I'm recording a video. See, if you want to leave, just leave. So all she's doing is creating, all she's doing is creating the environment to reaffirm that she's abandoned. So now she's going to say, see, now I'm abandoned. See, I told you I'm abandoned. I'm abandoned. But you actually created the environment so that that can happen to reaffirm the truth that you created for yourself. Go to therapy. You'll learn all of these wonderful things. I think I done went up the hill in that golf cart. I wish that damn golf cart tipped over. You shouldn't have left her down there. And as, as much land as y'all have, why would you leave her at the damn back of the damn land in the back with some heels on? She can't walk. You better have went back and got her shit. Stupid ass. See? You're back. And right now I feel the abandoned, but you created that. Well, you know what? I think it's wonderful because she said when her father died, 
She did not express any emotion. She didn't cry. So we know that we have in, within our community that we equate vulnerability and emotion with the weakness. So that's embedded in us. And so many black women do not express emotions that would make them look weak because they want to look like the strong black woman. We already know about that trope. We already know about the, the there's not really any pros about it. It's really doesn't, it's not of a benefit to be the strong black woman. Vulnerability is actually strength. But what I'm seeing in her interviews is that she's actually showing emotion. So she is crying. So she has an ability to show emotion. Now you just have to be able to show the emotion at the right times and not hold things or repress things in some, you know, box that when you actually want to need to express it, that is just too much. You know, I think I'm getting too, you know, detailed, but I'm glad to see that she's actually crying in her, um, in her interview. What's fucked up now is that there's so many that we, when we watch these shows that so many women want to cry, but then they don't want to mess their makeup up because they spent a lot of money on their makeup. So there's another barrier to actually just letting those tears flow. Because it actually is very healthy, too. Crying is healthy. See, she said it, being, being vulnerable is a weakness. There, there are so many women. Let me tell you something. I'm going to just tell you something real quick, and then we're going to keep going. I used to, you know, I have these random thoughts. And I used to think, like, you know, I have mentioned before how I've never seen Sabrina Fulton cry, um, Trayvon Martin's mother. And I used to feel bad because I feel like we had this trope and it does a disservice to us that a woman can't even get on TV and cry after somebody had murdered her son. And then I, I, every now and then I would hear women say that they don't cry in front of their kids. They don't express emotion. They don't, they don't, anger they'll show, happiness they'll show, but they don't show crying in front of their kids. And I thought to myself, if your children ever see you cry, when they get out into the world, especially little boys, when they get out into the world and they come across a person or a woman who is actually crying and is in need, they're not going to know how to respond to that because they've never been able to witness someone crying and someone who, someone who needs consoling. I have been in situations where a guy has told me his mother never cried in front of him. I cried in front of him and he was just looking at me like he didn't know what to do. He didn't know whether to hug me. He didn't know what to do because he didn't, he's never seen, that's not something that he, he that's not something that he had to do in his household. So he just, when he saw women crying, he'd just be like, oh, that's, oh, y'all cry? I, I don't know. I never, I grew up in a house where I, my mother, I never saw her cry. So it's like the disservice that we do to ourselves and to the people around us when we don't actually allow ourselves to be vulnerable. I had to learn, I had to learn how, I mean, you know, honey, we could get into it, but let's get back to this review. So now we're here with Marie and her grandchildren and her husband and her son, Drez. Sticking and moving, sticking and moving and running through and sticking and moving and running through. All right, but I really love this white beaded look that Marie has on. I just wish her titties were a little higher and maybe like the, the shoulders were, but I really like the design and the beading and this. It's just like pearls everywhere I love in her hair come on with the finger waves and the little thing on the side yes give them the give them babies all the sweet sugar yes a little fat baby oh my god the babies be so fat oh my god I'm just gonna bite them they look so delicious isn't that crazy how we talk about babies they look yummy and delicious a little fat lady we just want to eat them why you want to eat the baby <laughs> crazy as hell look at Cedric smiling like he a deacon that not coming home shit that's you can't do stuff like that that's disrespectful that little baby is QKP the one that came in with Jerez he looking around his cheeks his little jaws he's cute Cedric ain't holding the baby's head the baby's head is leaning back here Cedric pay attention Marie shares with us that she was diagnosed with lupus and she was on bed rest for a year and how serious it was. Oh, she said she takes over 12 pills a day. Oh, God. She does. She looks tired in her face. She looks really tired. 
And there's Cedric smiling. I know that's right. All right, so Jerez and his mother are having a conversation. He says what he got out from what he got from therapy. I'm glad we are, that she's allowing him to finish a sentence. I'm glad she's allowing him to speak for himself because of the therapy session, he he really didn't say any, anything. But he said what he learned is that he doesn't communicate good. No, you don't. You know how to make babies, but you don't know how to communicate good. We have to allow each other something wrong. It's, a, it's the theme. It's a theme here. When something's wrong, I need to learn how to communicate. When somebody dies, I should be able to cry. When something's wrong, I should be able to express my spectrum of emotions within range. Because when, when you don't, then they're out of order and they're out of range, they're out of moderation, they're imbalanced. And that is not good for anybody, just like on another, what he says, not good for anybody here, it's not good for anybody around you. People are not gonna receive you well. So I think like we just need to promote talking, talk, 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 talk. I let it all stay in. Now, now it's not, as you can see, Latrice just got out of, we just got out of seeing with Latrice saying the same exact thing. She's in her third, she's 30 years old in her thirties, early thirties. This is a 21 year old man saying the same exact thing. So you see, that's a, that's an issue. We got to get out of that y'all. Good. He says there's major progress with him and his mother. They're communicating more. That's good. He's a very handsome young man. I'm glad that he is learning how to communicate. You know, too bad he didn't learn it earlier, right? But at least he's hopefully and continually working on himself. Because as we know, very rarely do black men work on themselves because they just, I don't know why. I don't know. I should say, let me fix that. Black straight men, it's very rare, very rare. Um, black gay men, they tend to do um, more self-improvement stuff, working on themselves, from my experience. So she told him, and, and if you want to inherit anything that I have, you need to graduate with a degree. She said she got 10 businesses. I think he needs to be able to model self-control and self-discipline. I will put another stipulation on there and don't have no more kids. That's what I will put on there. No more. You three is enough. Period. Period. And you're explaining to him now how he has to be responsible in order to take, take over a legacy that you, a black woman, has created. You want to hand it over to an undisciplined a person who does have doesn't have any self control, and you want to have these conversations now. Yes, he can grow up. He's twenty one. Yes, he, everything. Yes, we get it. But some of that foundation probably should have started being laid earlier. But I'm just saying that's just my opinion on that. Because it's always you're the leader of your family. You didn't create a leader. You didn't instill leadership qualities in this person how are you expecting something that you yourself didn't pour into i just and a lot of parents do that to their children it's like you didn't even teach me that how the fuck am i supposed to learn how to do that like ugh. anyways i love you too they had to put subtitles on that because i love i don't know how to spell i love you you don't love god what's wrong with you did they just show a roof with a damn hole in it that could have cut that. Y'all didn't catch that? I'm going to just say this. We're at a Sage and Champagne party for Antoinette at her house to bring in good vibes and good energy. I'm going to say this, and I'm just going to be, I believe that Antoinette, I, I really want to say this. I believe that Antoinette is one of those black women who look down on La Letitia and Marie because they look a certain way. And for their, she has already labeled them unprofessional. She has already made comments that I just don't like, I don't know how to explain, I don't know how to say it. It's like internalized racism. I don't know how to say it, but the way that she's acting like these women are, like, I don't know, she's acting like she's better than them. I don't know what it is, but all of these things, these layers to Antoinette, I'm starting to see. I think Antoinette is going to look for any excuse not to be friends with Marie and um, 
Letitia. And she probably uses the same lens that Kaylon uses to look at Marie and Letitia. She's probably looking through the same lens. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. I don't know what it is. I don't like the way, even though Marie get on my fucking nerves, I don't like the way Antoinette's talking about her. I don't like it. I don't like it. Is that just me? I just don't like it. I feel like, I don't know. As black women, we have to respect each other. She said, even for other people outside to respect us. While I don't like to perform for white people, I understand what she's saying in this context is that, I guess, I don't know, maybe I don't understand. I'm trying to, trying to understand. But just respect each other. Don't respect each other just because white people are watching or you want white people to respect you. Just respect each other because I'm a, another human being. I don't know. So Kaylon says it's hard to be empowered at a brunch where volatile people are continually invited. So she's talking about Marie and they take earring off and shoes off if you say the wrong thing to them. It's never happened. I've been hosting brunches for five, six, seven years and it's never happened, Kaylon. So what the hell are you talking about? Are you talking about how the people responded to you? Is that what you're talking about? Because it's never happened. So what are you talking about? I'm, I wonder how Latrice feels, even though she doesn't get along with Marie. I wonder how Latrice feels listening to Kaylon talk about her and in the way she's talking about her. So you basically tried to say the girls get ghetto because they start ripping off earrings and taking shoes off. Is that what you're saying? Okay. But you don't understand. And Antoinette, why are you acting like it's so negative? I don't get it. Whatever. So what do you do with sage? Do you light it with a torch? Because I need to know what's going on. Mel, I like Mel too. Mel needs to be on next season. Take Antoinette out and bring in Mel. And you have all this sage and you don't need all of that. And it's too much. And all of the alarms started going off. It was just too much. It was over. It was OD. It was not what I was here for at all. It's actually, let me just fast forward through this. So he walks into the house and he is greeted and the woman gives him a paper and she says, you're going to have a special night. Follow the rose petals. He walks in. Somebody's playing the sax. It's, it's a mood. It's a vibe. Come on. I'll always be your sweetheart is what the little sign says as he was walking into the backyard. Candles lit. Somebody's sitting at a piano. She has it all decked out. Very nice. Hey, Zaddy. So she makes it up to him by having a nice dinner. He has somebody massaging him. It's hard to massage somebody whether while they're talking. Should have been done separate, but I get it. It's cute or whatever. So she does make it up to him, and I think she should have made it up to him because she did ruin the moment. She did. She wants to make up, make it up to him. You did good. You did good, Latrice. So he doesn't understand abandonment issues because he came from a two-parent household. Um, so she has a massage therapist there giving him a massage. It's weird, and he's explaining to her that you just have to open up. You have to allow yourself to be vulnerable. If I'm your husband, you're going to have to trust me with your vulnerability. And that should be your partner. If you have a partner, that should be the place where you feel safe being vulnerable. So he accepts her apologies. Apology accepted. Baby, he, didn't took, a, he took the watch back. I told you the nigga was petty, right? I told y'all he was petty. He got mad at her and took the damn watch back. Petty. <laughs> she said. I love that Rolex. When I had it on my nightstand, I put it on my nightstand. When I woke up, it was gone. <laughs> I ain't, Cliff ain't shit. Her hair is real cute in her interview. It is real cute. Come on, goddess, the goddess in me. Yes. I love those champagne glasses. Oh, my God. I love those champagne glasses. Oh, my God. I love them. I love them. I love them. He said, I got your back and your front. You just don't even know it. Shout out to Zeddy. All right, and that's how the episode ends, honey. They're laughing and loving on each other and stuff like that. Let's see what's going, what the next episode is going to give us. Let's see. Oh, so Letitia's apologizing to the councilman, and um, he said, based on what happened, a lot of people are looking at y'all sideways. And you know what's fucked up about that? What happened at that brunch was because of a white woman. So Tamper and Antoinette about to get into it. You black, but you ain't never experienced colorism. Uh, duh, she's a light-skinned black woman. She doesn't experience the negative effects of colorism. She actually benefits. 
So her experience that she explained while you're trying to throw it in her face is believable. She probably doesn't understand it because she is a light-skinned black woman. Girl, girl, what's up with your girl Antoinette? What is up with y'all girl Antoinette? Anyways, y'all, that's the episode. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. We're going to get into Love and Marriage Huntsville. Peace.